Python. Here, we'll be exploring some of the most popular libraries for data visualization, including matplotlib, seaborn, and pandas. Let's get started. Firstly, matplotlib. This is the most popular library for Python visualizations. Some of the major pros of matplotlib are that it's generally easier to get started with simple plots. It supports custom labels and texts. It gives you a great amount of control over the elements, gives you high quality outputs, and is very customizable. Now here, you can see I've set up a Google Collab environment, which as stated previously, is an interactive and online means of accessing Python via the web. That being said, I'd recommend downloading the Anaconda distribution, but let's begin. Being that matplotlib works well with NumPy and Panda arrays, which we covered previously, that's why we're starting here. To install it, you do pip install matplotlib, or conda install matplotlib, if you have the Anaconda distribution in your CMD or terminal line. Then, within your Python environment, you'd import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then, I won't type it here, but if you were in the Jupyter Notebook, you'd type matplotlib inline. This is typed as it allows you to see your visualizations within the Jupyter Notebook. Otherwise, within different Python environments, you would type plt.show at the end of each visualization. That being said, within this Python environment, that isn't required. So here, we'll just run import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And like I mentioned previously, this works well with NumPy and Panda arrays. So let's start with that, with two simple NumPy arrays. To begin, we'll import NumPy as mp, as is convention. And then we'll start as x being equal to np or numpy dot lin space, making an array from zero to five, and then y. The variable y will store everything within x squared. Let's start with the plot. There are two ways to do this: functional and the object orientated method. Here you'll type plt as that's what we've stored. Matplotlib as plt and then dot plot x and y we can either do plt dot plot x y but then add in r to suggest we want the color red equally we can add labels called the same plot plt dot plot x y color red with the x label called x label and the y label called y label and let's throw in plt.title to be title. So far, so simple. But now we're going to get a bit more complex with subplots. This is for multiple plots on the same canvas, canvas being the area in which you place your plots. Subplots take the number of rows, columns, and then the plot number you're referring to. Let's look here. Let's do one row with two columns. And this will be plot number one. And this again, one row, two columns, will be plot number two. Within plot number one, we'll plot x and y with the red colour. And for plot number two, we'll plot y, x, and then b for blue. And you can see on this canvas, we have two subplots. Now that we've covered the functional method, let's explore the object-orientated API method. This means we can call methods on figure objects, which is a better way of using matplotlib. A figure object is just a canvas, which you can set an axis to. So let's create a figure object. Fig equals plt.figure, and then axis equals fig.addAxis, and then some numbers. Now these numbers just relate to where on the canvas it will be. In the corner, it's the left, the bottom, the width, and the height. But we won't worry too much about that for now. Let's just create it. And you'll note, it's blank. We'll plot to it x and y. You'll note this is the same plot as the beginning, but using the object orientated method. So why go about this very complex way when it just gives you the same output? Well, that's because you get more control with your plots. So in sum, you create a figure, you add the axis, you then plot to it, and you can even set a title, same as before. Here you go. 
Let's continue our subplots. This is going to be the same as what we've seen previously. Although we can specify the number of rows and columns via fig comma axis equals plt dot subplots axis dot plot x and y the y and the x axis if we then call the fig comma axis variable from previously we can plot one row two columns which will look like this here you can see we have two blank canvases in one row with two columns we can play around with this so we'll call the fig comma axis variable and we'll do three rows and three columns. Now just have a think before we do this. What do you imagine might come out? Well, three rows and three columns. You'll note this tends to overlap and a very easy way to overcome that is just using the type method, plt.type underscore layout. This will stop everything from overlapping. Here you go. We can also index it. And remember, importantly, with indexes, that the first item in an array is always zero. So let's say our fig comma axis, we're going to plot to it with one row and two columns. Now we want the first one. We're going to plot to the first in that set, or zero, and we're going to plot x, y. Let's do the same thing here, but with titles and labels. We're creating a figure plot with one row and two columns. On the first set, we're gonna plot X and Y and give it the title first plot. On the second or first index, we're gonna plot Y then X and give it last plot. But importantly, you've done all this work and how are you gonna do anything with it? How will you report or show it to your peers? Well, we can save the figure. Of course, you could just screenshot this or to do it, more officially, you can use matplotlib to produce an output through a number of formats, including PNG, PDF, and more. Very simply, you would use fig.savefig, mypicture.png. Now here you just call it whatever you want the file to be called, dot the extension, so you could do dot PDF or otherwise. Next, we'll explore legends. This code here uses the matplotlib library in Python to create a figure with two subplots each containing a line plot. Fig equals plt.figure will create the new figure object. Axis equals fig.addName axis then creates a set of axis and remember the numbers just being where it is on the plot. You can ignore that for now. Axis.plot xy will be plotting x against y and then the opposite for axis.plot yx. Axis.legend then adds a legend to the plot, which calls the labels mentioned previously. So let's test that. You can see we'll now get a legend color-coded for each line on the plot. Finally, before going to other types of plots, we'll look at line types and colors. B means blue, G means green, etc. Line styles are also supported, where B dot dash would mean a blue line with dots. G dash dash would mean a dash line. Let's explore. Other types of plots are scatter, or histogram, or box plots. Done. Next, we'll explore Seaborn before finally finishing with pandas. Seaborn is a statistical plotting library built on top of matplotlib, so naturally, we'll go here next. With this, you can make heat maps and more, but it also works well with panda data frames. To install in your computer, again, either use pip install seaborn or conda install seaborn. To begin, let's import seaborn as sns. You'll be required to type matplotlib inline so you can see the visualization within your Jupyter notebook. Here, however, we're using Google Collab. So first, let's get some data. Now, seaborn has some built-in data sets you can load, i.e. the tips data set, sns, which is what we saved, seaborn as, dot load dataset, tips, and let's assign this dataset under the variable tips. Now, if we want to look at this dataset as a refresher from the previous video, we can use display tips. This will load everything. However, to just see the top few rows, 
we can do tips.head. So first with distribution plots. These allow you to see the distribution of a univariate or one variable. Set of observations. For this, you use displot. For a displot, therefore, you only pass in one column of your data frame, as there's only one variable. Simply, sns, or seaborn, dot displot, tips, and the column we're gonna pass in within squared brackets is total bill. Distribution plots are essentially the same thing as a histogram. Equally, we can add in a KDE, which will show a line here. We can also change the number of bins. Let's make that 30. Now, what does this show? Well, let's take a look at the one above. We'll see most of the bills happen between 10 to $20 and decrease with price. Joint plots. These allow you to match up disk plots for bivariate data. For example, we could compare the total bill column to the tips column. SNS.jointplot. X is total bill and Y is tips. Data is from the tips data set. So here we essentially have two distribution plots with a scatter plot in between. And you can see now how Seaborn is more useful for statistical plotting as opposed to batplotlib. Joint plots also give you the kind parameter. Let's set the kind with everything the same as before as hex. By default, it'll be a scatter plot, but let's say we want a hex plot the same thing but here the shading of the hex will associate how many dots there are within that area another kind of argument would be reg which would be a regression plot now we typically use joint plots for the default scatter and tend to not use the kind argument as this is typically the easiest to read pair plot essentially does a joint plot but for every possible combination of columns in the data frame this is a great way to quickly visualize your data. The data here being within the tips data frame, SNS, Seaborn, dot pair plot, tips. You'll see here we get a great many plots. Let's take a look at that. And here we go. Combining total bill to total bill or to tips or to size and so on. Every single combination of data within the data frame. You could also add a hue argument where you add in the column name of a categorical column. This means it will color the visuals based on that column. Same again, but let's use sex as our hue argument. This means it will color it based on male and female and add a legend. Categorical plots. Let's start with the most basic categorical plot, the bar plot, comparing a non-numeric to a numeric value, i.e. sex and total bill. SNS seaborn dot bar plot x is sex and y is total bill the data being from the tips data frame and by default it will show the mean of each column we may instead want to look at the standard deviation which we can change with the estimator function np dot standard deviation and so as we're using numpy we need to import that first bar plots sns dot bar plot here we'll set the x as day and the y is total bill. Again, we can set a hue. Let's make that smoker. So here it will break it up by another separate variable, smoker. So we can not only see day by day for total bill, but also whether the person is a smoker via the legend and color coding. Matrix plots. Let's load another data set being the flights. As a refresher, we just do SNS.load dataset flights and assign that a variable. Let's look at the head. Now to use a heat map, the data should already be in matrix form where each row and column represents a variable and the value at the intersection of the rows and columns has a relationship. For example, let's make a correlation matrix from the initial tips data frame, TC assigning a new variable is tips.cor. Let's take a look at that. You can see now Everything is associated to itself or another variable. Now we have this in a matrix form whereby the columns and the rows have relevancy to each other. We can start with a heat map. For this, very simply, sns.heatmapTC. We can also add anot equals true. Now what this will do 
will allow us to indicate the value within the color. Being that we've covered that, we can now revisit the flight data. For this, you need to pivot it, and let's look at the head. Again, this is just to make it so that it's a matrix. Don't worry too much about that. And from that, we'll call a heat map. Again, we can change the color of this to cool warm via CMAP. CMAP equals cool warm at the end of the statement. Coming towards the end here, let's explore regression plots very quickly. So, SNS.LMPlot, X being total bill, and Y being tips from the data frame tips. You can see this outputs a scatter plot with a linear fit on top. You can also specify the hue, again, if you wanted to add another element to this visualization, male and female. Finally, let's look at grid plots, sns.lmplot for the regression. Col equals sex. What this will do is break it up into two plots, one for male and one for female, rather than visualizing it on the same plot. Again, you could do this for rows with the rows being time. And that's everything for Seaborn. Now Panda has built in capabilities of visualization built on top of matplotlib that allow for data visualizations right from the data frame. As always, you'll start with import numpy in pandas. But for this, let's go to my word doc to explore there. Let's say we're gonna be working from some CSV files here. So data frame one is gonna be the data frame one CSV, which we will read. Let's look at the head of that. The index being the first column. Then let's import another one with df2. From this, we'll take a look at some examples. Let's say we have a histogram of the values in column A for df1, that being these columns here. Pandas can do this directly with df in square brackets a dot hist. And from this, we'll be able to visualize a histogram. You can then add in matplotlib arguments like the number of bins as explored previously bins equals 30. Other type of plots include area plots, which will look like that. Equally, bar plots, and also stack bars, scatter plots. Something else that you're able to do within pandas for visualizations is set the color based off another column. So, x is a, y is b for the scatter plot of the first data frame, but the color is associated to this C column. We now have a three dimensional plot. Equally, you could do box plot. And that wraps up everything for data visualizations with these three primary libraries. Now, this is only an overview, and to explore more, I'd recommend you jump in yourself with Python via any distribution and have a play.